Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Danetta Freeman, written by H2J1977. Two Galoians sat at a table in the corner of the galley of the Colchian Verschlag, a commercial freighter deep in Galoyan space, haunched together talking quietly. Reckle was two meters tall and half that wide. Wex was slightly smaller, and both had reddish skin with a light brown fur ringing the shoulders and covering their forearms, the colors marking them as laborer caste members of their species. Their heads were bald and their faces resembled an earth vulture, but with the large forward-facing eyes like an owl. Wex picked up his sturdy metal cup with his four-clawed hand, tipped it towards Reckle, saying, I'm telling you, Reckle, Danetta Freeman is the toughest being on the ship. If you saw what I did on the security hollows, you'd understand. Reckle flexed his claws and clicked his beak several times, laughing. Wax, she's about as tough as the stuffed Zvax that you probably kept in your nest as a fledgling. I scrapped Nurians off the hull of my last freighter that put up more of a fight than she could. Reckle, you just joined the crew a few months ago. You weren't here when she lost her arm in an accident, Vex said scrunching his head down into the fur cowl around his shoulders, just thinking about the incident. We were running a shipment of unprocessed metals from Gapta to Eurosta 3. It was only a three-day trip with the Spraytor's sublight engines. About six hours in, we started experiencing fluctuations in one of the engines. The captain sent her and one of the Honari engineers, Roya, down to check it out. Danetta, being chief engineer, sent Floyer down to the lower level of the engine room to check the pressure levels and get a first-hand look at things, while she did diagnostics from the command console. Reckle scratched his fur patch on his arm absent-mindedly. Is a story going somewhere, Vex? Just setting the scene, Reckle. I've been taking a course on the QNet on how to tell stories like humans, they all tell stories in such fascinating ways, unlike a lion's. There was a ball on the floor. I picked it up and put it away. The end. So dull. So boring. Anyway, using the command console, Danetta found an overload in one of the plasma conduits. She had just opened the access hatch when Floya climbed back up from the lower level in the engine room. He was snoots down with his data pad, making notes, and didn't see the conduit hatch on the floor. It's common knowledge that the Hanari aren't the most coordinated beings, and Floyer was no exception. His boot caught the side of the hatch, and he just launched himself right into Danetta. He knocked her backwards and into an open access hatch as he went face first into the bulkhead, knocking himself out. Seeing that Reckle's eyes were now focused on him, Wax continued. He comes about five minutes later and Danetta is dragging him down the central passageway, heading towards sick bay. Keep in mind that Floyer is probably 182 centimeters and weighs close to 105 kilos. Danetta is what, 165 max and no more than 61 kilos soaking wet. Reckle squinted his eyes a bit trying to calculate what it would take for him to duplicate Danetta's feet of strength. Those were some big numbers. He was certain he was up to it, but it was still impressive for such a small and frail being. Go on, Reckle said, realizing that he was actually getting wrapped up in Wax's story. So Froya starts pulling himself up, only to have Danetta push him right back down onto his rump. She tells him to sit still and let her check him over. She's the boss, so he sits, and his eyes finally get their focus back, and he's watching Danetta check him over. 
She's looking into his eyes, flashing a pen light into them. She asks him how many fingers she's holding up. She says you've got a nasty cut on your eye ridge, and it looks like your stew cartilage may be broken. Oh, it was three, in case you were wondering. Then she struggles to pull out a canister of derma paste and puts some on the cut on his eye ridge. She says to him, Okay, I think you're probably fine. I don't think you have a concussion, but let's have the doc check you out anyway. He asks her to give him a hand up, and he reaches out to grab hers. He misses. That's when he realizes that she was missing her left arm below the elbow. Instead, there was just a cleanly severed blackened stump. She looks at him. I'm done again. She just looks at him stone cold in the eyes and says, Plasma stream beats flesh. Let's go to sick bay. Floyer starts freaking out. He cracks and pukes right there in the middle of the passage. There he is curling up, knees to chest, blood dripping out of his snout, crying and cursing himself for being so clumsy. As she just kisses him on the forehead, she grabs him by the jowls with her one hand, looks him in the eyes and says, It's okay, Floyer. Really, it'll all be okay. It was an accident. I forgive you, but I need to get to sick bay. The adrenaline is starting to wear off and this is gonna hurt like a hell in a minute. Rickle just stared at his left arm. How could a being just shrug off losing an arm like that? How the cracks did she manage to drag a being twice her size with only one arm? Moreover, how'd she do it right after having it burned off? Rekel was certain that he had his arm obliterated and cauterized by a plasma stream. He'd have been unconscious right alongside Floyer. What happened next? Right, Wex said. She pulls him up, wraps her arm around his waist, and walks him the rest of the way until they get to sick bay. Dr. Guyun sees them, and he starts asking them what happened, and practically shoves Danetta into the closest med pod. Before Danetta can even finish her sentence, he hits her with a sedative, and she's out, cold. Floyer is there, and he's so traumatized, all he can say is, Plasma stream beats flesh over and over. Then Doc gives him something too, to calm him down. A few minutes later, Froya manages to tell the Doc everything. He says to him, You have to fix her up, Doc. This is on me. I've got to make this right. The Doc starts a neural block for the severed arm and wakes Danetta back up. He tells her she's got two options. They can start cloning her a replacement arm, or they can fit her with a cybernetic arm. Danetta looks at him and says, Which one gets me back to work the fastest? She's just been shoved into an open plasma stream, become an amputee, dragged an unconscious Hanari 300 meters one-handed, and she's worried about getting back to work. That's insane. Rekel blinks rapidly and nods his head in agreement. It really was insane and beyond impressive. Dr. Nguyen tells her that they can 3D print and program a fully articulated cybernetic arm in about two hours, and she could be back in work in six weeks of physical therapy. Or they could take a day or two to clone an arm, another day to surgically attach it, and she'd be as good as new in a month. But she chose the cybernetic arm, Wex, Reckles said. I've seen it. I've never asked about it because I don't know her that well. You're right. She did choose the cybernetic arm, Wex said, but she chose it because she had no intention of waiting six weeks for physical therapy. As soon as she got the arm fitted and fully neurally integrated, she went to the captain and told him she was going back to work, and unless he wanted a grievous workplace injury lawsuit, he would get the doctor to sign off on it. Needless to say, she finished the trip at her station. Reckle felt like Wex just pulled back a curtain on one of the secrets of the universe. He'd heard rumors about how resilient humans were before, but all the stories had been a third or fourth hand, and hardly believable. But here, yeah, through Wex's first-hand account, it had all been confirmed. I think you're right, Wex. Danetta is the toughest being on this crew. She may be the toughest being that I ever met. Wex clicked his beak, laughing slightly. Oh, 
That's just the edge of the planetary ring. Let me tell you about the time she broke an Altarian's nose and three of his fingers after he slapped her butt in a bar on Eurystar 3. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.